when there's a thunderstorm coming on a summer day. You can smell that scent of rain. That gives me memories of when I was a kid, when our moms and our grandmothers would mix the clay, the pumice stone. You know exactly what's going to happen. Where we're filming at right now is very special to me. It's on the outskirts of Cochi de Pueblo. This is where we've been getting clay for a long time. When I create with the traditional clay, I only do it at Cochi de. That's where it's born from and that's where I was taught how to do it. Our mom would always just say like, learn as much as you can from what I'm teaching you, but always know that you have to pass this information to the next potter to the next generation. It's not our secret to keep. My name is Virgil Ortiz. I'm from Cochiti de Pueblo, New Mexico. Cochiti de Pottery is my life. It's who I am. It's the heart and soul of everything that I do. I work in many different mediums, but in all the other mediums levitate and rotate around the Cochiti clay. I am a potter at heart. I was raised in a family of potters on my mom's Seferina side of the family. Waking up on a Saturday morning, most kids would go run to the TV and watch cartoons. But when I woke up, my mom would be working on her studio table with clay. Instead of playing with the action figures, I was like, okay, cool, I could make some of these figures with the clay. I can take the clay and make anything that I want. We park our vehicles at the bottom of the mountain and we have to hike 30 minutes up to the clay vein. Once we get to that area, you can feel the energy there. Once we approach it, we have to pay our respects to Earth Mother, feed her and ask permission. We ask the spirits that have passed on that were also potters for their guidance as well. Once we go through this whole process, we gather five gallons of buckets of clay. Working with the land and the natural materials that come from it, it's pretty amazing to see the transformation that all the materials go through. Realizing what the Cochi de Pueblo people have to do to collect all of the materials, I feel that's very special. You know, you're reconnecting with the earth through your hands, and that's an exciting thing to me. When I start working with clay, I think about our ancestors the pieces that they made in the late 1800s, all of those pieces were based on social commentary. That really resonated with me. It felt like it was all creating characters, and that's what I do now is to create characters based on the 1680 Pueblo Revolt storyline. Most people don't know about the genocide that happened because it's not taught in our schools, it's not in our history books. I'm going to tell this whole storyline when it happened in 1680 and also happening simultaneously in a future timeline of 2180. This allows me to be able to create all these different sci-fi characters and I guess people call that indigenous futurism now. 20 years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. That was just instilled in me of how to tell this story using art. That was the easiest way for me to do it. I hope that everybody looks up the Pueblo Revolt and does a little bit more reading about what happened. Hopefully, you know, not for us to repeat our past and the atrocities that happened. My prayer is that people will acknowledge what happened to the Pueblo people. To tell the story in the clay, I feel that's what I'm here to do. Clay is the master. Respect the clay. Get in tune with the clay. 
It's going to teach you what you can and can't do. It's going to humble you quickly to be able to connect through the clay where we're all going to go in the end back to the earth and know that the clay is just teaching us. To be here in this area always reminds me of who I am. I'm just a bead in a necklace.